Hello world, it's been a couple of years since I posted my first video and uh, I've had a number of people asking for an update. It's been a long haul uh, in between jobs and just tinkering over the years in the backyard here, but um, wanted to provide an update of what's new in the greenhouse since the first video. So I mostly finished off the uh, subterranean heating and cooling system ductwork. There's about 3,500 lineal feet of uh, mostly perforated, about 20% solid, uh, four inch diameter HDPE sun and sock, and, and obviously the solid stuff is not in sock tubing. It seems to be working really well at uh, tempering the temperature within the greenhouse when it's exceptionally hot. I managed to scoop up all of this ductwork from a Lowe's that was turning into a, uh, or sorry, a Rona that was turning into a Lowe's for 90% off, 10 cents on the dollar. And it's got this kind of cool steampunk vibe. Um, so all the, all the hot air at the very peak of the greenhouse gets pulled in these tubes and sucked all the way down along to the main stack and down to a manifold that's buried beneath the ground and pushes all the air out ultimately on the periphery, both on the uh, west and west and the east side of the greenhouse. Uh, within the manifold itself, I think the first video I was thinking about using some IBC totes, I ended up using pressure treated plywood. Uh, just seemed like it would be much stronger for the load of the earth be packed up against it. And so uh, eventually I'll, I'll paint this stack a nice flat black, but it's, it's sealed pretty well. And within it, I've got a couple of large, one, one large fan. I've got a few, a few fans around here, but this is a, a fan that's actually used for exhausting by the fire department. And I managed to pick these up also for about 10 cents on the dollar or 90% off. And so um, it's sealed with weather stripping around all the edges as you can see, and it actually seals really, really quite tight. And so it pulls air from way up there, and that's where it connects to the ducts, and pushes it down into the manifold below where I took a hole saw, and you can't see any of those right now because it's all been backfilled, but I took a hole saw and plopped in holes all along the, uh, it's about four and a half feet below below grade there. And I've got a couple of these temperature monitors hooked up to, to measure the temperature below um, this, this manifold as well. And uh, I can also measure, measure the temperature in the intakes at the, the, at the peak there. So I can look at the delta and see how much energy is actually being transferred into the ground. Um, yeah, it seems to be working um, really quite well. It's set up with these uh, Inkbird thermostatic switches um, and so it's got a set point and a and of course the present value in here is 16 and a half and you can set the differential to be whatever you want really I think I've usually got it at about um, three or four degrees so when it gets to be above about 27 or 28 in here the fans will kick on and they'll start sucking air through there and uh, putting all that heat into the ground and then cooling with the cool air that comes out. And then when it drops down to maybe about, um, well, depending on the differential, but maybe about 15 degrees, then the fans will turn off and, um, and they'll be fine. And, and you can actually set these things to be for heating and cooling. You can see that it's got the, the heating and the cooling. Of course, I've got it on the cooling load right now, but in the off season, um, I can switch that and have it draw air through and pull that heat out of the ground and uh, and warm up this space. So um, that seems to be working pretty well. On the end over here, I have two of these other fans. Um, one right here, and that's connected to one of these earth tubes. This is the upper earth tube. So at the very end over there, it's about 100 feet long. Predominant wind direction is coming in this way. And so that sucks all the air in along this way and pulls it in right here. And, um, and similarly, 
hooked up to the same uh, similar Inkbird switch there is another fan right there up at the peak. And so we wanna to try to have a bit of a balanced load, right? If, I've got, if I'm trying to pull air in um, and I've got nowhere for it to be going out, it's not gonna work as well. What else is new? This whole wall here, it's beautiful light at this time of night. Um, what's the, the, the date today is, it's like um, mid to late May, 2021. COVID seems to be just about kick the can, which is good. Um, but yeah, this is polycarbonate. Just, it's just the, the cheapest uh, twin wall, like five millimeter that I could get. Uh, I'm thinking at some point, because the, the, you know, the five wall or the really thick stuff is super expensive, but at some point I may, I may take and put a second layer of polycarbonate on this side right here with having a dead air space um, in the middle between the beams, which would allow for uh, even better insulative value on this wall. Um, there's that fan, that fan way up there. This has been a bit of a pain, this wall. Sometimes the, the wiggle wire um, with the strong winds has pulled out a few times along this wall. And, and the, film, the film now is uh, about five years old, so it'll need to be replaced sometime in the next couple of years. Not too long ago, I built this big shelf along the front here, and I don't have a ton of stuff growing in the greenhouse yet, but this can ultimately be used for seedlings or microgreens or uh, whatever we decide to use here. And this has just a very slight kind of one degree slope from that end all the way down to this end. And similarly, a slight one degree slope this way. And so the idea will be to allow water to be pumped from these big water cisterns that I'll show you in a, in a little bit here um, to this end. And they can kind of go like a flood tray um, or we could even use some, some wicking felt if we wanted to and have the water come all the way down and then uh, because it sloped that way and then similarly slope back to have a bit of a re recycling for um for the watering system there so what else can i tell you oh this is my yurt from uh from burning man actually it provides some really nice living conditions when you're out living in the desert um but last year we had some plants we wanted to keep going um in the winter time and so um, we actually used, we set up the yurt and, and put some artificial lighting in there to keep them nice and warm. We couldn't, couldn't justify heating the whole, the whole greenhouse, um, but set up a, one of those inkbird thermosensitive switches and um, kept some stuff growing in there throughout the winter months, which was pretty good. I do need to get some wiring. It's a bit of a mess with spaghetti lines of extension cords all over the place still, but growing a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of stuff in here at the moment. Um, the, the, the trio of beans and, and squash and corn all together. It's just kind of a, a nice, uh, nice trio and some lettuces and um, you can grow anything in here. But this is kind of a cool thing too. This, I dug this well by hand, believe it or not. It goes down about, I don't know, it's gotta be at least 10 or 12 feet down into the ground. It basically goes all the way down to the water table. Um, which will allow for this to be used as a dewatering well if the, if the water level ever gets too high in here and starts to interfere with the, the subterranean heating and cooling system pipes. Um, but I've also been um, debating about using this for another kind of uh, additive or, or redundant um, heat exchanger by, uh, by pumping, by having an, a separate tube in the middle, you can pump uh, hot air down and have some uh, some wicking cloth which will allow for evaporative cooling like a swamp cooler down the bottom there and um, so a, a second pipe in the center pushing air down that pipe and then the air would go down um, lose its lose its heat um, and and then the air would come up the annular space on either sides of that pipe so that's another thing we might uh, might experiment with and all the, all, yeah, all the subterranean heating and cooling system pipes kind of come out here and around and, and go all through the earth, all the way up to the front, all through all, basically the whole, the whole footprint um, at the front there is like that. The front's been holding up pretty well. Some of these, some of these, so these are the pipes and some of these straps have broken over the years um, and just wrap them back up. I brought a wood stove down here not too long ago. I haven't hooked it up, but I'm thinking we may um, hook this up and have a cob bench or, or something like that um, someday. 
These are 1,250 gallon totes. So, um, and th those are about 4,000 liters each, uh, maybe even closer to 5,000 liters each. So five, 10, 15, 20, 20,000 liters of water. Um, and they're almost full. I, we drink, I drained them down last year cause I was worried it might get too cold in kind of January when we, things were below freezing temperatures in here for a little bit. Um, but in the minimal amount of rain that we've had, it's got them all full, filled back up already by May. So uh, we need to start growing more so we can use more water. So the, the whole roof obviously slopes this way. And it also slightly slopes from that end all the way to this end where there's a, a water catchment with a bit of a first flush to reduce some of the detritus material and, and um, you know dirt and stuff that might accumulate. And then just comes through some solid big O right down into this first one. And then these are all connected in series with valves for each of them. So there's some of the pipes I do. We, um, in case one of them fails or in case, uh, you know, we overflow, I've just, I've dug a trench in here recently with, with some, some tube to allow that to, to, ex to exchange out to the end here. And that just basically, I've, I put up, when I did the original grading, I put a, one of these tubes that I got right up, right, right up, that goes about, that's probably up to 20 feet long that goes out, um, out to the edge there. The fan has been a bit of a pain over the years. It's like, it keeps separating. And so I've got no end of tape going around there. A tape that I found that works really good is, um, it's the Tuck Tape brand, but not the red stuff because it's ugly. It's a clear and UV stable Tuck Tape. So I would highly recommend that for people that are um, using this uh, polyethylene in their greenhouse. There's the other earth tube. And we have had fans um, over to this one with the thermal switch as well. And so this is, um, this is the exhaust. So the predominant wind direction is that way. We put out the exhaust air goes through there and 100 feet out that end. And in doing so like a camel nose or heat recovery ventilator at a very large DIY scale, um, the hot air goes out there all the way to the end and uh, loses its heat in that uh, mass of earth that's buried in and uh, then allows that air that's coming in the top that I showed you to that other fan the intake to be tempered by all that heat exchange that's lost. This black wall here, I also intend to, um, to paint flat black because that's one of the only walls that's not insulated. It's insulated around the mass of earth behind it, but that particular wall, I want uh, heat to be able to exchange into that. And, um, what else can I show you? Oh, here's my kid's playhouse. That's kind of fun. You guys don't care about that. We're making like a little toilet and t table and chairs out of the clay here. I got three kids and they're the best thing in my life. And my wife is also the best thing in my life. It's, it's pretty symmetrical, kind of, again, kind of steampunk feel. So I think I, I really like how that turned out. It's a nice, uh, nice feature. One other thing I forgot to mention in the last video is that I did create a, um, a frost and um, water skirting curtain, whatever it's called, all the way around the whole periphery of the greenhouse too. So from the outside there, buried about maybe six inches below the final grade is some of this blue board, this um, rigid foam, um, uh, that's, a, it's, what is it, R15, per three inches. And so that's buried uh, four feet out of foam all the way around the whole perimeter of the greenhouse. And then it's got about eight feet of poly that's also buried down there to, to shed out water. Um, I, I don't think I had electricity in here when I showed the last one. So yeah, so we ran a service in. I almost wish I'd gone with a bigger, um, a bigger service. I only used six, three um, wiring. So I was only able to get a 60 amp service in here. Um, I kind of wish I had got a 100 amp service and I probably could have gone overhead. I mean, I don't know why I needed to trench that in to get here, but I probably could have gone overhead. This was kind of a, a little bit of a scaffolding thing that we rigged up, just the temporary, um, that just that can come down. I was just using that when I was installing these. That's over a year ago. But yeah, slow and steady wins the race. And uh, yeah, it's been super fun and we'll just continue to, to tinker along. So thanks for 
sticking with me for the update video and um, yeah feel free to post your comments and uh, be happy to hear what you guys are up to Jeff Rempel the sustainability scientist signing off see ya